It's fair to say, over the years, I've driven some great cars, some of which are very rare and expensive, which often adds an extra element of excitement to them. But today, I'm driving not just a rare and expensive car, but one that is a true legend. The Porsche 962 is possibly one of the most successful race cars in history. And this one, despite the racing decals, is road legal. What in the name of all things motoring? I'm driving not just a car, but a true hero. The Porsche 962 racked up wins all around the world in the US with the IMSA Championships and, and Group C. Porsche dominated Le Mans in the 80s with this and the earlier shorter 956 they had six consecutive wins at Le Mans between 82 and 87 no one's ever done that the 962 won the Daytona 24 hour race five times it won the Japanese Endurance Series Championships five times Derek Bell won 21 victories driving a Porsche 962 and that winning streak lasted for a whole decade with a Dower 962 taking the checkered flag at Le Mans in 1994. Following the ban on the so far successful Porsche 956 over in the US, after safety concerns about the pedal box being ahead of the front axle, and also maybe partly due to the sheer dominance of the car, the 962 was born. Pretty much a 956, but with an extended wheelbase, so the pedal box now sat behind the front axle. A steel roll cage was then integrated into the aluminium chassis and a 2.8 litre flat 6 fitted with a single turbocharger made the 962 eligible again for the IMSA championship. Back over in Europe, Porsche also adopted the use of 962s in the Group C series, but with larger 3 litre twin turbo flat 6 units. The 962s became so popular and very successful that they soon became in big demand, not just by Porsche themselves, but by privateer teams. Therefore, over the course of its lifespan from 84 to 1991, there were 91 Porsche 962s built, 16 of which were kept by Porsche themselves. And there were a further 75 were then sold to private teams. Some of these private teams thought that there was room for a little bit of improvement and one of those such teams was Kremer who bought a series of cars and made various modifications to them to make them even more competitive and this is one of a few of the Porsche Kremer 962 CK6s has a 3 litre flat 6 twin turbo engine churning out 750 brake horsepower in a car that weighs about a tonne. These things were often seen doing I don't know, about 230 miles an hour down the Mulsanne straight at Le Mans. <laughs> and now I'm driving it through the Midlands in sub-zero temperatures on a main road. Let me tell you, it's, it's very scary. The accolades of the 962, I could 
go on about all day. But let's face it, you're here because you want to know what it's actually like to drive. Well, it's fast. These things were designed to do silly speeds around racetracks. So getting it on a road like this is really difficult to tame it. I'm doing my best, but believe me, it's very, very slippery on a day like today. Now, BBM Sport in the Midlands, just outside of Daventry, are the ones that made this amazing beast road legal. But this is not like any of the Dower 962CR road cars that were developed to be a road car. This is an X racing car. This particular car came eighth in the 1988 Le Mans and it had race wins at Hockenheim and the Hungaro ring. This is a full-blown race car that's on the road. It's as simple as that. Now it's not, as you can imagine, the most practical of things to drive on the road. The steering's heavy and the turning circle is just non-existent. There's been a few instances today where I've been trying to turn around and you just end up having to roll it backwards and then have another few attempts. I must admit though it's surprisingly comfortable and easier to drive than you might imagine. The only thing is sometimes with the steering, as soon as there's any tram lines in the road, it just follows them. It feels risky when you go to change gear because driving this thing with one hand is its quite hard but things like the brakes rate work really well BBM have also managed to put a traction control system in the car but they said you're better off just turning it off because if this thing goes nothing's going to save you slightly worrying as you're driving along the attention from other road users but then I mean imagine driving down a B road and suddenly seeing a 1980s Le Mans racer going the other way there's one thing race cars you always expect them to be really warm inside with the engine I've got that twin turbo flat six revving away behind me but it's freezing this gap is just letting fresh air in and I think it's about minus two outside oh but you know what I really don't care they could have put needles sticking out of this seat and I'd still be here what an experience now I just wish I could find the Mossad straight and really open her up Honestly, it didn't matter how the 962 drove. Getting behind the wheel of a car which, if you search hard enough, can be seen in old footage at Le Mans was bound to be a thrill. But it has to be said, obvious issues aside such as the non-existent turning circle, race clutch and complete lack of rear visibility, the 962 is much easier to drive on the road than you might expect. Given the opportunity to drive it again, I would absolutely jump at the chance, but preferably on a warmer day. Bollocks. This, this is what it's like. I slightly missed a left turn. There's reverse. I found it once. No. I've got someone filming me now. I'm stuck. I can't find it. I'm going to have to turn it off. Let it cool down. <laughs>